Hey, Marcus, does this room look small to you? Man, I'm not there. Yep, looks small to me too. Remember how Assassin's Creed Unity was so bad that the announcement for Assassin's Creed Syndicate was an apology? Remember how they released the first Watch Dogs and they thought it was okay to not apologize for it and just go ahead and make a sequel? Well that's okay because Watch Dogs 2 didn't need an apology, it just went out there and was a good game on its own. Watch Dogs 2 is about a hacker group called DeadSec, and their whole mission is to fuck shit up for big corporations. They use social media to gain all their followers and expose everyone and they have a ton of enemies. They have to deal with gangs, opposing hacker groups, and corporations. The organic relationship that exists between all of these factors creates a dynamic amount of story arcs between all of the groups. DeadSec is comprised of Marcus and Horatio. Yo, Horatio, man, I'm scared, bro. Why, what is it? I'm about to look like us. Oh, man, welcome to Silicon Valley. Hey, what do you call a black man surrounded by thousands of white people? What? Mr. President. Hey man, they see two of us together, they gonna think we plotting. We are plotting. Wretch who likes to blow things up, Satana is the graphic artist, and Josh the hacking protege who does all his work from the HQ. The writing for this game is phenomenal, it's how you write a proper satire of a culture. The jokes are legitimately funny and there's great vocal performances. The writing of Watch Dogs 2 is intentional, not ironic. The difference between these two is what the difference is between cringy writing and enjoyable writing and jokes. Now that might just be a shame. Damn right, and that is why you, my friend, are going to hijack me a 2.0 pre-order shipment before some do-gooder white hat tells home how to cock block us. got a weird relationship with technology, you know that, right? Now Chicago, Chicago's just fucking boring and dangerous. San Francisco is so exciting. It was a much better place for this game to take place. And they did such a good job of creating the atmosphere of San Francisco too. The world is alive and everything makes sense when you're just exploring. Aside from text dialogue that repeats. I found this one guitar center place and this isn't like a place you can interact with. This is just a detail in the background is that it has music playing out of it. And they're doing something special with like the lighting techniques inside of uh, fake interiors that makes it look like there's more going on inside of them and it's fooled me a few times. Remember how I talked about in the Saints Row video that what makes a good open world is one that's memorable? San Francisco is absolutely a memorable place. Hacking is intuitive, fun, and well designed. And the layouts of all of the buildings that you can sneak into feel so organic. Like some of them have some pretty clear paths that you're supposed to use to get into them, but there is a rewarding feeling that comes from discovering these ways. Level design that puts gameplay first, conveys what it needs to be done, and also feels organic. Fuck, sometimes you don't even need to go the path that you clearly see, just try brute forcing it. The game tells you about the three main ways to do uh, hacking. Ghost, Aggressor, or Trickster. And of course you can always go a hybrid between all of them. I personally played more of a hybrid between Trickster and Ghost, but you know, you can play whatever dumb way you want. You could just go in shooting cars through windows. <laughs> The whole hacking aspect is what makes up the depth of stealth and approaching. The game drew clear inspirations from successful games, in, in, in their gameplay sense, from Grand Theft Auto V, Metal Gear Solid V, and the Saints Row series. All of your hacking tools are great. While the gunplay is solid, going in guns blazing is more than likely not gonna work. You still have to think things out. The leveling system is based on the number of followers DeadSec has. You get more followers through doing missions, side missions, online missions, Uber driving, and taking selfies with famous landmarks. Driving has an arcade feel to it. Later in the game you get more expensive cars and they feel much better and like you would expect them to feel, but for the most part you're stuck with cars that don't feel too good. Right from the get-go, like the, your first step into the open world, you were able to fast travel and see the entire map and go through all of it right away. There was nothing restrictive about it, there's no bullshit fog or anything. I did try to play the game with only using my own cars for a while. What happens is that sometimes when you call a car, it just doesn't spawn. As far as I can tell, this is just completely random. And if you're doing a mission where you have orange arrows on the road and not blue arrows, then you can't fast travel. 
so your only option really is to just steal a car. But you know, that's okay because some of the fastest cars in the game can just be on the streets. And they can do that, they can get away with that because you don't have a personal garage to steal them and take them to anyways. The music choice in the game is fantastic. This is the first time Tretch has been in a, in a game soundtrack since Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Unfortunately, there aren't a whole lot of songs for the game. However, that's okay because the PS4 has Spotify. Let's talk about the graphics. They're really impressive. On PS4, it's only 30, but it's very stable. The PS4 Pro runs the game at 1800p and scales it down to 1080p or up to 4K. That means that if you're playing on a 1080p TV, you're getting way better anti-aliasing and texture quality. When they tell you that the PS4 Pro is dropping frames in areas that the regular PS4 isn't, they, you've got to remember that those areas are way, way, way more intense on a PS4 Pro than they ever could be on the regular PS4. There's actually a mechanic where you take selfies in the game with certain landmarks around San Fran and you get experience and followers for them. Now let's finish it off with the multiplayer. Alrighty, I'm gonna flip onto your car. <laughs> <laughs> Since the seamless integration wasn't working on launch, I have no idea what that's all about, so I'll stick to what I have played, is two-player co-op and free roam and co-op missions. Did you do this one? <laughs> oh, I, Jesus Christ! Did, did I do this Did paint? you break the cane? crane? <laughs> you can break the crane? <laughs> How am I gonna get down? <laughs> oh no! What do you mean get down? It's already down! Because you broke it! Can you fix it? What do you mean fix it? You Can you hack it better? <laughs> you cut the wire. I don't think there's any fixing that. What do you mean I cut the wire? I'm way up here. Way up there? You broke the ca crane on my screen. But, oh my god, I'm like in the air. I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> no, you're on the ground here. And the oh, crane, we're, you we're broke. We're seeing two very different things. Oh, okay, I'm going to come down. Oh. <laughs> Do you see the crane thing here? Oh, it's still now you're up there <laughs> And you're stuck You can't get out <laughs> You're just running around. It's the goddamn crane. I can't get out while in the free roam There's a lot for you to actually do together. There's tons of collectibles that are around there's uh, tons of money, research points, unlockable shirts and paints, uber driving, and taking selfies. Essentially, everything in the open world is open to you with a co-op partner as long as it isn't a mission. It's open player co-op. You can't, you physically can't go wrong with playing that. That's just guaranteed fun. So I'm gonna break down some really cool things that happen in the game, but they're spoilers, so if you're not entirely convinced on the game and don't mind spoiling, keep watching. If you mind spoilers, then skip ahead. While everything stays local and to San Fran, right? It's all the companies and, and uh, organizations that work in San Fran. The FBI gets involved, and the FBI gets so mad at Marcus, they mark him as enemy number one. And then in retort to that, what they do is they mark everyone in San Fran, at least attempt to, as Marcus. And it throws their face recognition off so they can't even, like, Marcus is able to go out in public again. There's a part where Horatio is being investigated and you have to hack into the room, get the guy interrogating him to leave, and then you have to communicate with Horatio via the light switch. We all know Aiden Pierce is a boring as shit person, but even these guys manage to make him sound like a cool guy when they talk about him. The gang falls in love with a shitty hacker movie in the game because the movie is like really cheesy and has a forced hacker plot. You sneak into NASA and hack a fucking rocket so you can hack satellites in space to avenge Horatio who you had just like connected to a few missions ago over at Noodle. You blow up a gang's entire wheat farm and then you go in and shoot up the gang's illegal dogfighting ring. Nothing during the E3 presentation was done for the sake of the presentation. On the actual mission, Satara starts up the music and 
and she does it again on the next mission and plays Fortune Sun while you're blowing up rigged voting machines. There's a part in the game where you actually take control of a robot and you gotta move it through a manufacturing line. And different areas of the cities have different demographics. Chinatown has more Asian population. Vista Point has way more tourists at it. Bitch! You created this asshole! I don't wanna die! Thank you! You okay, hot! What are you, crazy? You need to Shit learn how to What should I do? Go Say it again! Else. Come on! Dude, Yo, man. what the fuck?! Don't make ah! me get violent. Let's just think about this, okay? Inbred fuck! Get out of it! Hey, you over there! Are you going to run, huh? Come on! Are you afraid? No. You wanna start something with me? Because I will finish it! Dude, You're step going to regret the that. fuck away! Uh, you, did I scare you? Yeah, Are you running you away scared? Look, I'm not joking. I could be packing. You got it! It's I one. one. What is your name? Why is it always me? Watch it! Get out of it! Shit, stay. You need to leave now. Hello? We need a serious DeadSec uses a 3D printer to make all of their drones and guns. Now I'm gonna talk about some negatives I had that were spoiler related so I couldn't talk about them. The ending was alright, it wrapped things up pretty well. The good guys win and the bad guys eat shit. Probably my biggest complaint with this game is that you cannot replay any of the missions or do a new game plus. This is like something that's in every open world game like this, so I don't know why it isn't here. It really sucks because it would be so cool to go through the game again with harder AI, but also all the tools you have by the end game. The low times make it hard to efficiently reload if you ever get caught or die, but this is just a struggle of the PS4 if you haven't upgraded its hard drive to 7200 RPMS. Alright, now I'm gonna talk about the reviews that are out about this game from other people. People don't seem to understand that DeadSec has control over everything running CTOS, and nothing at all military, nothing government. They have no knowledge on how to do anything like that. Only CTOS, and CTOS is just a consumer level program. So like, that's kind of part of the whole issue of CTOS to begin with? Most reviews I've read, I would just say to the people reviewing is, dude, chill, have a little fun for once. Here's an excerpt from the Kotaku interview. This, the, this description of the dialogue doesn't exist. I don't know where they're get they're just making this up. I just, have they played the whole game? Do they know? The only frustrating part about the checkpoint system is load times. Here's the reality that I know a reviewer isn't going to admit. If you spend 30 minutes in an area without making any real progress for the check for you to hit the next checkpoint, you're bad at the game. It's not a surprise though that anyone that is a game journalist is bad at video games. Sorry, it happened to me a few times where I spent like 10 minutes at most scoping out testing out a quick plan, but having it go horribly wrong, but then using my brain to realize how I should tackle the hack I need to do in a more safer, efficient way. Like, yeah, everyone is gonna be bad at the game at first, but you get better. Except these reviewers, apparently. It gets challenging, but this is your playground. This is your area to work in. Right, so let's wrap things up here. The small nitpicks that I had are not enough to keep you from enjoying this game at all. There are still tens to even hundreds of hours of fun to still be had in Watch Dogs 2. So please, forget whatever bias the first game gives you. If you can't click with how intentionally dumb and silly the writing and story is, then focus in on the gameplay. The gameplay itself is solid enough for me to recommend this to people to play. It is so fun. I would- I- my whole reason for making this video is I just don't want to see this game end up going under the radar as an underrated title just from the rep of the first game. But personally, Watch Dogs 2 is my game of the year. That's right. I don't think there is anything else that's coming out this year or has come out that will be even close to topping how fun this was. Absolutely nothing. Nope, nothing left at all. Absolutely not. No, nothing.